Blast Tube friends. This is Diane, the Be a Blessing Stitcher, and this is Floss Tube number 18, and today is Thursday, October 3. If you are returning, thank you guys so, so much for following me. I appreciate each and every one of you, and if you happen to be new on my channel, welcome in. Um, I hope you enjoy my content and I hope you enjoy what you see and that I can enable you to, because I've been enabled. <laughs> so I hope I can enable you or encourage you to try or start something new. Um, this channel is primarily about cross stitch. There might be a little bit of crochet, a little bit of sewing here and there, but mostly crochet, mostly cross stitch. Um, so I have so much to talk to you guys about, so I'm excited to be here today. I have been to a couple of different stitching retreat things since we last spoke. I had COVID for the third time. Um, as a matter of fact, when I watched my video from last time, I noticed I was sniffing a lot. The very next day I had COVID. So. <laughs> I apologize for all the sniffing on my last video. You don't realize it sometimes until you go back and watch yourself and you're like, oh, that was awful. That was really bad. But at that point, you don't have any way to really edit it or fix it unless you take the whole thing down and start over. So anyway, I apologize to anyone if I offended you with all my sniffles. Um, COVID was no fun, um, but I have to say the third time around wasn't as bad as the second, and the second was not nearly as bad as the first. So now it's starting to feel more like just a really bad cold when I get them. Um, hopefully I won't get it a whole lot more often. I feel like it's kind of like the flu now. I feel like you are just gonna get it some years and some years you won't. Um, but anyway, so I got to experience that. Thank goodness it didn't land on any of my excursions. Um, so one of them, the first one, was a uh, stitching retreat, the Crazy Woman Retreat, and that was in Casper, Wyoming. And I went with a couple of my good friends, um, and we did a road trip. And our road trip was rather interesting. It was a long trip. I think it's about 10 hours maybe for me, and maybe closer to 12 hours for them. Um, on the way down there, we got behind a, a truck that was an open flatbed and it was carrying these big long pipes. And I had just said to my friend, I'm driving a car that's not mine. And I said to the gal in the front seat with me, I said, I hate getting behind these things because I always am nervous that something's gonna come flying off. And no more had I said those words than a pipe. Um, it was like a half length that wasn't secured came off. It rolled right in front of me into the center I drove past and then I watched it roll right across the road and onto the shoulder. So somehow um, God was watching out for us because I didn't hit it. It didn't hit me. So very thankful for that, but it made me rather nervous and I was very ready to give up my driving duties for the rest of the trip. <laughs> uh, and then on the way back, we hit a deer. <laughs> so it was, um, it's something we're gonna definitely think hard and long about before we make that trip again, just because it is so very far to drive. So um, we're not sure if we're gonna make it back, which is too bad, because we've really had a blast. Um, the designer there was Lindsay from Counting Petals. Um, she just was as sweet and, and wonderful as could be. She had a trunk show and um, she had some awesome displays and some really innovative ideas on how to do displays. And she sent us to a couple of different links on stands and things like that for our finishes that were on Etsy. Um, so, and then of course we bought some of her patterns and then Cindy from Stitchery Express was there um, and had pretty much any fabric or chart under the sun that you might want. Uh, there were also several vendors that were selling bags and things like that. And of course I partook of all the <laughs> things. I was so, so super blessed and fortunate to be able to sit at a table with Brenda, the handwork maniac and her daughter-in-law and her good friend. And we just had such a wonderful time. Um, it really was my first experience going to a full-on retreat where there was a designer and everything there. Um, the food was all included in this retreat and it was really wonderful. They treated us like queens. Um, it, was, it was just a really overall great experience. I had so much fun. So I'll show you the hall section of this 
is going to be fairly extensive. So I'll do that at the end. And if that's not your jam and you don't want to see any of it, you can just cut off at that point and I'll go through some of the things that I bought. Um, but yeah, it's really hard to say no when you're at those things and you're surrounded by everybody else who's like-minded and they're all stitching wonderful and amazing things. And Brenda, has always enabled me and she was stitching the cottage garden houses all on one on 46 count so I have to now try doing all the houses on 46 count <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of experience on 46 count um, I did start it this week and it's a little slow but maybe that will get faster as I go I'm kind of hoping that that uh, eventually that muscle memory will kick in and and things will go a little bit faster um, so really, really had a lot of fun at that table. And um, Brenda was so kind because the fabric that was called for was um, Prehistoric by Fox and Rabbit, and you can't find that anywhere. And she even snipped off a little piece of the bottom of her fabric for me so that I could take it to different places and see if I could try to match it and get something similar. And that was so very helpful because the following week I went to the Stitchery Nook in Osage, Iowa, and they have a retreat center. Um, so you go for uh, like two or three days, however long it works for you. And she has room to have about 17 or 18 people sleep there, I think. Um, and then you also can just come and choose to um, stitch for a day if you want to, and you can stay at a hotel. Um, and she has room for probably about maybe 20 people in the retreat center. Uh, so it's smaller, but it's also so fun because you get really to know everybody in that room quite well. You end up visiting and sharing stories, and we had such a great time. Um, my friends from my Saturday night Zoom were all there. Mary Beth and Charlotte and Mary and um, Leanne and Jeannie, the Loose Thread Stitchers, they had us just in stitches with some of their driving uh, excursions and stories. We were just rolling on the ground. We told them that they have got to put that in their videos. Um, so we just had a great time, a really great time. And then of course, Liz's shop is right downstairs and we all enable each other again. It's like, oh, what are you stitching? Oh, that's gorgeous. Where did you find that? Oh, I need that one too. And so we had a, we had a super fun time. So that was really what I have been up to. It's probably why I'm a little bit late getting to you guys this time. Um, just trying to get my feet back underneath me after doing all that running. And then, uh, but the problem with that is I bought so many things that you should just see the mess around me. Like I can barely squeeze in here to sit. <laughs> There's so much stuff around me. I also did a fair amount of stitching. So I think maybe let's jump in and let's just start showing some of the things that I've been working on. I try, oh no, I'm gonna show you my finishes. I have a couple of FFOs and one major fail that I'm gonna show you anyway, because I think I have an idea to fix it, but I can't believe I did it. Um, I was in a hurry because I wanted to get it done for this video and I rushed it a little bit too much. Anyway, I'll go into more of that when I show it to you. My first one, I had this frame and this mat already and I had done Mighty Acorn uh, about a year ago and I got it finished and I got it put into this existing frame that had a mat around it. I did have to sew some extra fabric to the edges in order to get it to fit in this because I wasn't really planning on this big of a finish, but that worked just fine. So I wanna encourage you guys to never be afraid of um, stitching some fabric around the edges of your piece in order to make your finish work um, because nobody will ever see it. As a matter of fact, mine is red plaid. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see my ugly back, but I want to use this frame for other things. And so I didn't want to really finish it with the paper backing and all that kind of thing that I would do if I were buying it and using it for just one particular stitch. So here is Mighty Acorn. I love it so much. And I'm just thrilled to finally be able to display it, especially in time for fall. So that was one. I literally, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be bending over to reach everything, guys. So you're gonna see like the top of my head, apologies. It's not the prettiest view. <laughs> it's thinning as we get older, it's doing all the things. So anyway, just wanted to warn you, I'm gonna be bending over quite a bit. I spent an entire day finishing and I got two things done, two. 
Like I started, I got up that morning and I knew I was gonna do finishing. I got two things done and then I was just like done. So anyway, my second one looks kind of boring because it, this is not how it stands or sits. But this, oh, and I forgot to print the pattern for this. Um, this was by Sub Rosa off of Etsy. I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> Something of Autumn, Leaves of Autumn, I believe. And I just fell in love with her edging. Isn't that cool? The edging on the top and the bottom. And if I had been patient, I should have ordered a little bit of a smaller piece of fabric, but I ended up doing it on 25 count, which was just a little bit too big for where I wanted to go. So I had to do a very, very snug, tight finish on it, which it looks okay where I have it. Um, I'll put a picture in somewhere, either here or in the beginning somewhere of how I have it displayed. I have a, a wicker basket that hangs on my wall and I change the decor out in it from season to season. And then on one side of it, I have magnets so that I can swap out my pictures. And so that's where this one goes. So the fact that it doesn't really have any trim or any edging, it kind of doesn't matter because it gets lost in all the other busyness of what's going on there. But anyway, loved this pattern, you guys. It was really easy. It was a fun stitch. Highly recommend it if you are interested in a fall stitch. I just thought it was so pretty. It was just exactly what I've been looking for for that area. Okay, and now if I can find it for the fail. It's here somewhere, I think I tried to hide it. Um, I was watching Helen D and she had done um, some really cute finishes on, um, on a spool um, that she had purchased off of Etsy and the patterns came from thread. Ah, I've got it. Let me find it. Let's see. Nope, not that one. <laughs> oh my, oh my, oh my. Maybe this one? Nope, that's my hometown. Well, shoot, a pickle, you guys. I just had it. I'll find it here. I'm so sorry. Be patient with me a minute. Well, that's just kind of crazy. I know I pulled it out. Oh, there it is, I think, tucked back behind everything, maybe. Let's look in this one. Yep, there it is. Threadwork Primitives. And this one was called Primitive Crow. And she has several that are just the perfect size for this particular spool. Now the spool isn't something that's made, it's an antique, and so I don't know if you can get them anymore, but most of the time you can take a stitch and you can adjust it to fit on almost any spool, just depending on the fabric that you choose. So here is my finish, and I did choose some of my own colors there. But my problem was I cut him way too short on the sides. And so I can see all my buttons. <laughs> it looks like he's got all kinds of little ears popping out. So I think what I might do is I might take this apart and stitch fabric, like a cute coordinating fabric along the edge for about maybe a half of an inch on each side. And then I should be able to stitch it together again with buttons and then the buttons won't show. But for now, and for this season, I think this is how he's gonna stay. So I did put eight buttons on mine because he's fairly tall and because he was sh a little short this way, I thought eight buttons would make it a little bit more secure. So this is not attached to anything, it's just simply wound around the buttons so that it's very easy to remove and reuse. So that was kind of a fun stitch. I enjoyed doing that one. Okay, now let's see if I can keep myself organized a little bit. That's one down. Okay. Then, oh yeah, and so I forgot to show you this, but Mighty Acorn is in the Winds of Autumn book by Blackbird Designs. They have a lot of really, really cute, oh, I have another one in there. A lot of other cute patterns in here that I would like to do. I've seen a ton of people do that owl. I think that's really fun. That would be a cute little pillow. But that was my 
winds of autumn and as you can see in my picture i changed the house color mine is blue i ended up changing all the colors of everything and it was a it it made it it took some of the fun away because i stitched things over and over and over again especially when it came to the leaves so my recommendation is don't change the leaf colors. Change the house if you want. Change the, um, like the tree. I changed the tree to a little bit darker brown. Don't, don't, don't change the leaves because there's like three colors in each one. And they really kind of all work together and blend together. So that was a little bit of a challenge um, because I decided to change that. That made it hard. It made it a little bit hard, but anyway. That one is done, it's been done for a whole year, so I, I'm sure I recorded my color changes, but I don't think you guys want them. <laughs> Just gonna warn you. If you want my house color or my tree color, I'll be happy to do that, but I won't guarantee that the colors in the leaves are accurate because like I said, I went in and changed and changed and changed, and I'm not sure if I kept writing down what I eventually ended up with. Okay. Then I spent about the last week and a half, two weeks working on Hometown Sal by Teresa Kogut. I got quite behind again, as I do because I squirrel and I see other pretty things and I just can't not start all the pretty things. Um, so I spent a good couple of weeks working on it. This is how much she has released so far. The newest piece was that tree down on the bottom corner. And I really only had the top row done. So I had quite a bit to do. The other thing is with the hometown sampler, I don't like to, um, I gotta tuck in my needle and my thread here. See if I can get my dangling thread out of the way. I don't like to stitch a half a house. Um, and so, Sometimes I'll leave the house until I have the full pattern, until I can see everything, all the parts of it. And I found that was the case with even the tree. I didn't know if there was gonna be more to it. And I hate to do all of it and then have two or three stitches that I have to add at the very end. So I tended, this is as far as I think I'm gonna go this time, but this is my progress. And I'm absolutely loving it. It's really so much fun, you guys. It's not going to be long and I'm going to have to take that off of the scroll frame in order for you guys to see it. So I got the second whole row done and I started on the third row there of houses. I'm waiting to put the back stitching and all of the names of the businesses and the shops on until I'm finished. I'm, I have a pretty good idea already of where some of them are going to go because I've been charting them out a little bit. Um, and I keep thinking of new shops that I want to have included in there. So I'm just making a list right now of names and we'll see once what I have that fits when I'm finished with the whole thing, like see where everything will go the best. So I'm gonna wait till I'm finished before I actually put names in, but loving it. Is anybody else out there doing this one? I would so love to see your progress on it. And I am using all the called for colors on this one. I haven't changed anything. She has done um, one for sure. She's done one of the houses with fancy floss and I didn't want to do that. Um, I wanted to not have to really think about this one. She has a lot of colors in this one and I just didn't want to have to be like, oh, if I change this color, then that's too close to this color. So I just left everything the way it was charted and called for. So, and I'm loving it. I, I think she's got such a talent when it comes to choosing colors and her color palettes. And she's just really a true artist. So um, I trust her <laughs> and I'm just gonna go with what she's calling for. So that one was that. And then I really spent a fair amount of time working on Rejoice Evermore, which was my friend Beth the Red Cross Stitcher's birthday start. So if you guys are working on this one, I would love for you to tag Beth like on Instagram and let her see what you're doing. This is such a gorgeous one and I know a lot of people have done this one already. Um, so it's nothing new, but it's new to me and it's new to Beth and we do tend to like a lot of the same things and so when we can, we stitch them together. And so this is my progress on that one. 
And I apologize, guys, if I have dangling threads anywhere. That is just how I stitch. And so I will apologize in advance and I hope it doesn't bother anybody. But this is how far I am on Rejoice Evermore. And I do have the whole border done. I've just got it tucked in right now into my Q snap. So I've gotten across the top here. Most of this I think is done and now I'm starting on the flower. This is an exact copy of this over here. So it's getting there and it is also just a fun stitch because it feels like there's all these little motifs that you get to finish and it's like each one is an accomplishment. You feel like every time you get a little section then you just feel like, oh, you know, it's just like a little boost um, and it just kind of keeps you excited about continuing on with it. So that is Rejoice Evermore. And I said in my book of days that I worked on Winter Rose Manor but I am not sure if I have any progress, to be honest. So here's Winter Rose Manor. I love this one. I love it, love it, love it so much. And I got a little pop-up on my screen I gotta get rid of. And this is where I'm at on this one. I think if anything, I might've done a little tiny bit more of the house and done some of the windows maybe. I know I worked on it quite a bit the previous time. So I think I might have started doing some of the windows before I put this one away. So I cannot wait to have this one down and up in my bedroom. That's where this one's gonna go. Okay. Keep myself organized, guys, trying. I still have a whole bundle of um, bobbinated threads that came out of a a project bag when I did my last whip parade like four months ago and I can't figure out where they belong. I think when I do my next whip parade, maybe in January or at the end of December, I'm hoping that I find them. <laughs> I figure out which bag they have to go back into. <laughs> okay, then I had a very sweet and kind gal reach out to me and she is on her own grief journey and there is nothing that will unite you as much as grief, as a shared grief journey. Um, you understand a level of pain that people who haven't really lost anyone close to them maybe doesn't completely understand the full scope of it. Um, and so it does really unite you. And so she's walking her own grief journey. And she had um, the idea to stitch something together. And of course, I jumped on that. Um, I told her to pick something out and she chose the Everyday Sampler by um, Hands On Design. I don't know, I didn't ask if I could share your name and so I don't quite dare. Um, maybe in the comments if you're okay or message me if you're okay with me sharing your name, I'll do that next time around. Um, so anyway, she chose the Everyday Sampler, has wonderful wording. Um, I'll just read it to you real quick. It says, every day God invites us to reflect on the past with its experiences of joys and sorrows and through God's mercy and grace, give thanks and look forward to a new day. And so this is the pattern. And I toyed with the idea of just doing this top piece, but it doesn't have the full expression and sentiment in it that I really wanted to do. So as of right now, I'm still planning on doing the full sampler just because I really liked the words. I have just the smallest of starts on this. And what I decided to do, because I was not a huge fan. Oh, and my, my magnets are all over the place on this one. Let's see if we can bring those back in again. Maybe not. They don't want to cooperate. Let's see, try that. Oh, there we go and try that. Aha! So, I decided to do it monochromatic um, rather than have all those color changes because I wasn't crazy about all the colors anyway. Um, I wanted something a, a little bit brighter in a way. Um, so I chose this kind of peach pink fabric, which is, let me find it for you. It's Ballet Slippers by Fox and Rabbit, and this is on 40 count. And then I chose um, a floss that I had found 
at Christmas time last year. It's just a really beautiful gray black. It's by Gentle Arts and it's called Carriage Black. And against this peach color, it is quite stunning. So I don't know if that translates very well, but as you can see, I've only just started the border on the top. What I'm thinking I might do, again, because I was with other stitchers and she, they were all giving me ideas, um, the bottom of this pattern is different than the top, and so it's not symmetrical. I'm kind of a symmetrical gal, kinda. So I may change the bottom of this to, to be the same as the top, just so that it balances out. Because it can't do anything easy, <laughs> right? Why would I do something easy? Yeah, so anyway, that's my thoughts on it. That one's still very much a, a work in progress in my head. Um, and sometimes it's better to let those just percolate a little bit until you make a decision before you get too far and end up having to pull things out. So that's where I'm at on that one. Then I really need to mark all my project bags. I bought a bunch of these gourd or these bulb um, safety pins and then I would attach a little tag that said what my project bag has in it. I can't find them, not anywhere. So I ordered more. So I'm waiting for those to come so I can mark more of my project bags so I know what, what's in what. Last time I talked to you about um, Daylene Wilson and uh, a stitch that I wanted to do in her memory. And she was working on come into my garden and I got that. So here is that pattern. It's by Blackbird Design. And I kitted it up immediately and I got started on it. However, I'm doing it on 46 count. <laughs> 46 count, guys, for me, is slow. I'm not fast at it. And I'm hoping with practice that I will get better. So as of right now, I am just, sorry, I've got dangling threads again. I'm just working around the border. I don't have much done yet. Here, let me fold that in half so the breeze doesn't like just take it everywhere. There we go. So I'm working around that border. And that border is double, as you can see the lines there. There's, there's a lot of stitches in that, just little border so far. I spent several days just working on that. So that's my come into my garden, and I will continue to plug away at that. And the fact that it's 46 count, I am just a little slower, so that's okay. It's not a race. It's all about the process. We had a discussion a while back about whether um, we were a process stitcher or whether we were a product stitcher. And um, I'm not sure what I am. I'm a combination of both. I love to get things finished and done and up for display, but I also can't tell you how soothing and relaxing it is for me to pull out my stitch. Sometimes even in the morning before I go to work, or over lunch um, if I've got an extra half an hour or at night. It's just there's something so therapeutic and so, th so th soothing, <laughs> can't talk, so soothing about just sitting and stitching and the needle and the thread and the, the rotation um, that I love. So I can't really say that I'm totally a product stitcher either. I, I think I'm a true combination of both. I see things and I wanna display them and I like them to be done but I also have to understand that sometimes it may be years before I actually get to see a completion on some of the things I'm working on, especially the way I stitch, which is like a squirrel, like all over. I'm all over the board. <clears throat> okay, then the next one is, <clears throat> excuse me guys, got a frog in my throat. I should grab my drink. This was my birthday start. Remember me by Teresa Kogut. Still absolutely love, 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 love. Can't say enough how many times I love this. And I got going on it and I thought, whoa, I am just flying on this thing. I'm gonna be done in no time. And then I pulled the chart out and I looked at it and I went, oh, no, no, no. You, you are gonna, it's gonna be a while. <clears throat> but I do have the top row of the border done. I was thinking that the border was the majority of the stitch, but it is not. There's a whole big house in the middle. But isn't it pretty? Oh, I love it so, so, so much, you guys. 
Um, let me look up what I'm doing on this one. I am doing 40 Count Dusty Road by Seraphim. And this was my birthday start, which was in August. So I'll keep plugging away at that one too. Now that Sampler of September is over, I'm not totally sure what I'm going to go into next. I may continue to do them. I may jump into Christmas stitching because I feel like I've kind of done my fall stitching already. Um, <laughs> I hate to even admit that, but I feel like I've been there, done that with fall. Although I did pick up a couple of Halloween-ish type patterns. I've never, ever stitched anything Halloween before, but there've been a couple of them that have been very intriguing to me and they were Blackbird and I just thought, I don't want to miss out on them in case they're discontinued or you can't get them anymore. So I just grabbed them because I liked both of them quite a bit and I don't know if I'll ever actually get to them, but so that could be a possibility that I could tackle something like that, although it's not really on the horizon, not, not in the immediate future for me. All right, I told you I stitched on a lot of things. This next one is, <clears throat> oh, this one I started at the, um, the Crazy Woman Retreat. So Jenny from Cricklewood Crossings was there and she had a booth selling um, her charts. She was not the designer, she was there stitching. She was at the table next to me. And um, she had just started a brand new series and I fell in love with it. I thought it was so cool. And she turns out she's gonna be doing like eight of them. So excited. I told her I want them all, hurry up. <laughs> But the first one, and she, so many um, stitches have a portion of a song, but she's doing like a sentence of the songs. And so she, the first one that she came out with is Hark the Herald. And it's Hark the Herald, angels sing glory to the newborn king. And I just thought that was really pretty. So of course, when you're there, you have to start it then. Um, she had little floss packs that you could buy along with fabric. So I didn't even have to try to go kit it up at all. It was just all right there. And there was enough fabric in there that I think I can do four of them. And this is my start. We did end up changing the color of the face just a little bit <clears throat> because what was kitted up was a little bit too tan and I wanted something a tiny bit more pink, so I think we used conch. As a matter of fact, there were quite a few substitutions in the floss pack that were different from what was called for in the chart. So if you want any of those, give me a holler and I'll be happy to share those with you. But don't you guys love that? And then those wings, they're surrounded by white. They were just about the death of me. <laughs> I wanted so badly to stitch on other things while I was at the retreat, but I wasn't going to quit until I had the wings done. So I stayed up until like almost one o'clock one night because I wanted to finish those wings so bad. So I have, I've got to pick this one up again too. This one was so fun. And Jenny was just, what a joy and delight she was to talk to. I got to visit with her a couple of different times. <laughs> she kept sending people to look at my stitch because she was selling it and and she'd be like, oh, that's all, okay, you're, you're getting there. <laughs> I was stitching so slow because I talk a lot and I have a really hard time when I'm at a retreat to sit and focus. I mean, you're up, down, up, down, and then somebody comes back to the table with a pattern. And you're like, oh, where'd you get that? I got, and then you're up and you're off to the new, you know, go shopping again at one of the other vendors. And yeah, that one was really hard on my pocketbook, but so fun. And I just, I adored Jenny. I just adored her. She was just so much fun. As a matter of fact, I think this bag that I got, so the fabric on this one, I kept it. I can't believe I actually remembered to do that, is Forbidden Fiber Co. It's called Bungalow. This was a quarter yard. And like I said, I think there's enough to do four of the stitches that she, she's gonna do, I think a series of eight of these. Um, <clears throat> so, that was it. These are the threads that I ended up with. Uh, most of them were by Forbidden Fiber Co, but I did swap a few others. <coughs> I have to get a drink. Um, 
as we were going along, um, Cindy from Stitchery Express had a lot of her fancy flosses there, so you could just go, <laughs> it was way too easy, but you could just go to her counter and you could just look through her flosses and go, oh, this is the color that I'm looking for, or yeah, it made it way too easy. But again, so much fun, so much fun. So the bag, oh, I've been forgetting to do this. Somebody asked me to show my bags and I'm really bad about remembering where I got them from. Uh, this one I got there and it was made by Jordan. It's called Jordy's Handmade. <clears throat> but isn't that pretty, you guys? And then it's this on the back. And then um, inside is this beautiful fabric. It's so, so pretty and so well made. And I'm not even sure if she has um, a an Etsy store or not, or if she just goes to the, um, and does different retreats and puts her stuff there. I know some people do that, so. So that was hers. And this one is Starry Owl Stitchery. And this one's gorgeous too. Look at that. I just couldn't resist those dark colors for some reason. And her inside fabric is, and then the back is solid. And this one came with this really cool um, chalkboard tag on it, which I haven't marked at all yet. I, I need to get going. I need to get my... And this is the one I ended up putting Hometown Sal in, just because I needed something kind of big enough to hold all the floss and everything from that one. Okay, what else have I started? Oh yeah, so... Handmade... Um, Brenda the Handwork Maniac. Yeah. She was working on cottage garden houses. I think that her and Colette might have started those. I don't remember when, first of the year maybe, but um, I loved it. And she was doing it on 46 count and her stitching is impeccable. And she's sitting there without magnification. She had like glasses on, but no extra light. And she's stitching 46 count. I'm just like, I don't know how she could do that. But anyway, I bought all the houses and I started on Santa's house. So I'll just quick run through them. There's only 10 houses out yet. So this is Santa's house. And I did get a little start on that one, but oh, so much white to start with you guys. And of course the only color I don't have is the roof color, which would be the next obvious place to start. So I can't even do that. I have to wait till Saturday. That one should be here on Saturday. So that's the first one. This one's just called Castle. I'll go through these kind of quickly for you guys. The third one is called Greenhouse. <laughs> There's a lot of white in that one too. What was I thinking? The fourth one is called Cottage. Ooh, that one's cool. Love the bricks. The next one is Hobbit House, and she made the door green on this one. Green is one of my favorite colors, so I will probably be following suit on that. I might have to ask her what color she used on that one. The next one is the Tree House. I think these are so fun. And then you put them all together on one. Way cool. I am doing mine on 46 count platinum. Um, it called for Fox and Rabbit um, Primitive and can find it. Um, and so Brenda, like I said, she was so kind and she gave me a little piece of it. And where'd it go? Here it is. I'll show you the difference. I'll hold hers up and I'll put it next to mine when I get ready to show it to you. The next one is called House Barn. Look at those sunflowers. And then Lighthouse. See, now I would never do a lighthouse except in a series like this. And so to do that in one, I think is kind of cool. This one's called Floating House. And Fairy House. Kind of loving that purple in there with that green. Kind of loving that. This is not my style at all, but I just love it. And I found a pattern I have been hunting high and low for. I found two of them. <laughs> I, 
I thought I threw them away. I must have tucked them in there. Okay, so the fairy house is the last one. This is the 10th one. This is the newest release. It just came out about a week ago. So there's two more in this series. So I will be getting those two just as soon as they come. And here's my teeny tiny little start. I started this just a couple of days ago. Have to get really close, but don't look too close because it's white, you guys. Oh, it's so hard to get white to look nice. And so this is platinum and this is what Brenda gave me and that was um, prehistoric, not primitive, it's prehistoric by Fox and Rabbit. And I thought it was, it's more gray and a little bit lighter, but I actually kind of like a little bit of a brownie color, almost better than a gray. So I'm really happy that little sample though was so helpful, so very helpful in trying to figure out what I wanted to do for a fabric. Cause I was gonna have to wait a really long time if I wanted to, I can't believe I found those two balloons. <laughs> if I wanted to stitch it, and I did. I wanted to start it, so. Okay, so that was one of my newest starts. Okay, then I have one more that I started. And this one I've had for a while, but I finally, after like searching for a year, I found the fabric that I wanted to do it on. I was inspired to do this one by um, Teresa, the little stitcher. Uh, she's been working on this chatelaine um, called Evening in the Park and she had done it on a fabric by Stephanie and it was kind of a cornwall or cornflower blue just a beautiful blue color and I couldn't find that color anywhere so I picked up Malachite when that one came out that was way too dark green and then I contacted fabrics by Steph and asked her for the color which was Abyss but when I got it in my 32 count it didn't look anything it was much darker than what Teresa's little stitchers was and so when I was at the retreat I found fabric I was so so excited to find this you guys um, let me see if I even have a name on here of who the fabric is by I'm kind of hoping that it might be somewhere in my bag I'll look through it a little bit to see if I can find out who the dyer was on this but I got just the smallest of starts on it. And I started this when I was at Osage at Stitchery Nook, but I got the center section done. And there's tons and tons. There's some beading and stuff that goes in there. And I won't do that until the very end, but I did use some of my specialty stitches and I did some, not chronic, petite treasure braid. That stuff's a nightmare, but it sure does make it pretty. So I finally got started on my shadow lane. So I was really, really so excited to be able to do that because honestly, I have a ton of money invested in that. I bought all the silks um, and I've tried a couple different fabrics that didn't work out. So I really wanted to get going on that one. Plus I know that Teresa has been working on hers for five years. And so I can only about imagine how much longer it's going to take me to get mine done. I'm looking to see if there happens to be the name of the fabric in here. Nope, that was the Malachite bag. I kept all the bags, but they're not all labeled. Nothing. I got nothing, guys. Shoot. Well, it will remain a mystery. This will be my mystery fabric, but it's just a beautiful color. And they also had a green um, in the same vein, the same sh shading as this one. And so I picked that up too, because I really wasn't sure if I wanted to do blue or if I wanted to do green. And then all the girls at the retreat helped me to figure it out. When I showed them Teresa Little Stitchers, they're like, oh, there's no contest. You have to do that in the blue. So yeah got it started. Who knows where that's going to take me and how long that's going to go, but it's started. So I'm really excited about that. Okay. Then I think before I jump into haul, because I want to totally give everybody an opportunity to like exit, I'm going to go over my plans and hold these very loosely because when I looked back at my last video, my plans didn't really pan out. I was going to start the folk series by hands-on design 
Yeah, that's kind of out the window now. I started my shadow lane instead, along with about three or four other things. So I have to get up to reach these. So give me just a second. Okay, I've got about four things that I really want to start. And we'll see how things play out um, where the wind blows. Because <laughs> that's kind of how I work. Um, but this one is... Amazing Grace Little White Church. It's really hard to see. I think I'm gonna take this out of the package, so pardon the wrinkles and crinkles, guys, but I don't think you're gonna get a very good picture of this. I need to put him in his own project bag anyway. So this pattern is for the church and the tree and the flowers and all that. And then the fabric you buy from them also, it came from Kanikas, Kanikas Prims and Whims. It's on the bottom here. Kanikas, Prims, and Whims. And you get the fabric from them as well. And you can choose what count you want, but then they stamp it or print it or whatever it is they do. And so you stitch it on top of Amazing Grace, which is just super cool. Sorry, I got all the fans and windows and everything open. So we're blowing like mad. You know what? I have my board out. Let's try that. That will show it a whole lot better, probably. Why do I think of these things at the very end of my video? There we go. Isn't that cool, though? I think that's cool. Um, I saw that one first on Jennifer the Calculated Stitcher. I like her a lot, too. She enables me quite a bit as well. Um, <laughs> It's all good, right? It's just so much fun. It brings me a ton of joy. And so um, I think it's okay because it does. It brings me so much joy. So the first one is one that I have started. It's my oldest whip. And while I was sitting next to Hannah and Alicia, Alicia, uh, Alicia was kind of amazing. She had really not cross-stitched much before and she had started just a little about two years ago and then didn't really pick it back up again. And that girl finished it at the retreat. And so she inspired me to pick up my oldest, re my oldest whip and get going on it again. And they made me promise. <laughs> so I think this weekend, this is gonna get some stitches in it. This is called a Gracious Era and it's a dimensions kit. And this is just done on the called for Ada, but it's so old that the Ada is just like, I'm sure at one point it was stiff. It's not stiff anymore. So I really am such a long way. Um, the thing that has been intimidating for me on this is two things. As I stitched it, because I didn't really know what I was doing, I was stitching um, sewing method style with tent stitches. And so it really has pulled my pole here crooked. And so every time I pick it up, I see that. And I know that when I, when I um, stretch it, it's just gonna be a matter of giving it a tug and it will be fine. But it bothers me every single time. And then also the pattern calls for random snowflakes everywhere. Like not just a few, they're everywhere and they're not charted. So you have to go in and you have to just put those in randomly. I also have, this is one of those that requires a bunch of back stitching, um, And so that's intimidating as well, but it's been sitting there long enough. As a matter of fact, you could see the masking tape around the edges, <laughs> that's how old it is. But here's the actual pattern. And if I get nice and close, you can see, look at the snow, you guys. Oh, so much snow. And so somebody suggested to me don't you think it's pretty without the snow? And I said, yeah, I think it is. So I may leave the snowflakes off. Tell me what you guys think. But I wanna, I wanna get it done because I still love it just as much as when I started it. 30, I think I started it like in 97, 96. So almost 30 years ago, is that 30? Yeah, almost 30 years ago. So I just really wanna, I wanna get it done. And I made a promise. And I don't like to go back on my promises. And so 
Hannah, Alicia, it will get some stitches this weekend. I won't promise I'll finish it, but it's gonna get some stitches and I'll try to make it a photo. It would be wonderful if I could finish it, at least the stitching this year yet. So we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so that's one thing that's definitely in my plans. And then a good friend of mine, Mary Beth, is going to be doing anniversaries of the heart. And I have had this for a while. And I thought I had the fabric kitted up. But when she talked about beginning hers, I kind of wanted to start it with her. And I pulled my fabric out and it was too light, I think. There's an awful lot of white in some of these pictures and I just don't think it will show up very well. So like this is the first house and like look at all the white. And I think that that would have gotten lost a little bit on mine. So I went back and I went through all of my um, fabric and I found um, some Wren, 40 count Wren, picture this plus, that I think I'm going to love. So I'm going to do it on this fabric, which I think is just really a nice, beautiful, pretty brown. And so that is on the horizon. I wanna at least start it. Like I said, I think I've had it for a year and I love the idea of personalizing it and doing blocks for my grandparents and doing blocks for my parents and um, my husband and my kids. <sighs> I am such a crier. I hate it. Um, I, I've had to start warning everybody that if you have a conversation with me, there will probably be some point where I start to cry. Just ignore it. Just, I'll be fine. <laughs> but I am a very easy crier. Things make me go pretty easy. So anyway, that is one I really, really want to start soon. As a matter of fact, I think I have ordered all of the floss and that's coming soon so that I can get that one started. And this one I've had on the horizon for not that long, but a few months, and it's the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And Jeannie from Loose Thread Stitchers finished this one. I didn't even know she had this pattern when I, when I found it, kitted it up. I actually bought this pattern off of one of the stash sites. And I just love, 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 love it. But I really don't have it kitted. I have fabric pulled, but I don't have floss pulled yet. But that's very much in the forefront of my mind of one that I want to start. And then the last one is, <clears throat> before we hit haul, and haul is going to take a while, <laughs> I bought this one off of the stash site as well. Brenda the Handwork Maniac has it done. I keep thinking I find something original and I tune into her channel and there it is on her wall. Oh, and I love her wall. I talked a lot to her about her wall. I love how she just can pin things up, whether they're fully finished or not, and enjoy them. So I'm trying to figure out if I can turn the inside of a closet door into that and then just leave that propped open during the day, but then close it when company comes. I don't know. I just love that idea of being able to look at my stitches because we all want to look at our stitches, right? And sometimes the fully finishes don't happen right away. So anyway, so this is the one that Brenda has done. I think it's just so cute. I do love my dimensions kits. And so this one is um, haunting me. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word because it's kind of a Halloween stitch, but not. I love, it's got all the things I love. It's got a lantern and it's got like the warm glow of lights. Um, I wish the cats were dogs, but I'm gonna live with the cats. I used to have cats until my kids all became allergic to them. So I love cats too. I desperately love cats actually. I would have a house full, I think. That's probably why, um, why God made my children allergic because he knew I'd be, I would be a cat lady. I would be like the lonely cat lady with 50 cats in her house. <laughs> I do love my animals. Okay, that's it guys. That's my plans, that's um, my whips. I only have one other announcement. Um, my Ursula bag did not get claimed, you guys. I was kind of disappointed that somebody would put their name in for it, but then not bother to check back to see if they won or not. So I redrew. It just, it's the speed at which I do my videos is only like 
less than once a month and I just didn't want it hanging out there for another two or three months before I could actually mail it to someone. And so I drew a new winner this morning and her name is Julie Williams 522 and I happen to know who Julie is. And so Julie, I have your address. So I will be sending that one to you. Congratulations, Julie. I'm super excited for you to get this. It's an amazing bag. I used mine for the retreats. It holds so much and it's so tall and it's so sturdy and I love it. So I'm super excited. Here's the bag that she's going to get. It has this nice big square bottom, not square, but rounded square. It's got pockets on both sides. It's got pockets on the inside. It's just really quite a wonderful bag. And the, the edges are hard, so it makes it kind of stand up. It's a wonderful bag. So Julie, I'm super excited for you. Okay, for anybody that doesn't want to see haul, now would be the time to exit, because <laughs> we're gonna start. And I have a lot. So um, I'm not gonna do this in any rhyme or reason, I think. I'm just gonna kind of go. And uh, I apologize if it feels disconnected or disjointed but I just want to kind of get through it in a decent order. So from the um, retreat, the Crazy Woman Retreat, they had one of these um, project, what are they called, project rolls. So you can put your finished projects inside here and roll them up nice so that they don't get wrinkled. And I had a whole stack of them already that I could put in there. This was her last one. It's probably not my favorite color, um, I would have preferred something that's maybe a little bit more um, vintage or um, what's the word I want? Prim, probably, but it does the trick and I didn't have to sew it. So, so, so excited to be able to get that. And then I bought a bag from Emily also. Um, it's buried over here somewhere, but I bought this gorgeous bag from her. And this was a nice big tote bag that she made. Her name was Emily Michelle. It's called at I'd Rather Be Cross Stitching. And look at the, kind of the colors, you guys. It's so fun. And then on the inside, she has an acrylic piece that gives it stability, but you can also remove that when you want to wash it. And then it also came with an, an extra bag that you can attach your flosses to. You can put your um, scissors and all that kind of stuff in here. So <laughs> love it, love it, love it. As a matter of fact, it got quite a workout because as I kept buying things when I was there, they all just kind of went right in here. <laughs> so it got a workout that same weekend. Okay, I don't want to lose that. Here we go, over here with that. Okay. And then while we were while we were gone, I had ordered from Riley Blake Sweetbriar. It's just a I'm blanking out on what this is called. What is this called? <laughs> They're the two and a half inch strips. Oh my stars! <sighs> Jelly roll. Whew. Just took me an extra minute. Ugh, that's kind of scary. So I got it, this really cute jelly roll. I love the colors. They look kind of retro, vintage-y. I think that's gonna be something fun. I don't know what. And I broke down and I did a Sew Sampler monthly subscription box for August from Fat Quarter Shop. And then I turned around and canceled it. I don't know what I was thinking, but they are chock full of really cool things. Like I got an, a small Ulfa cutter and I got uh, a template that goes along with, it goes along with um, like a, a pattern that's included in here. If I can hang on to this and not drop it. So this is called Verbena. This is the quilt pattern. So that template kind of goes along with making that. Let me see what else is in here. Nope, that's just part of the pattern. And then it also came with um, a coupon code, which I didn't end up using. It expired in September and my September just went And then it also came with, um, I think this is called a layer cake. I think this was a layer cake and it is called Folk and Lore by Moda. And so that's got some really beautiful fall colors in there. I don't know if you can really see all the different ones. 
So it'll be fun. I haven't really even had a chance to open up some of this stuff, you guys. I got it and then I had to like get ready to go. And so some of the stuff has just literally been sitting here for a month. And I just realized I got another notice from Alicia, Alicia, the flamingo stitcher, that she's sending me another box. And here's her last one. I haven't even hardly opened it. It came with this really, oh, this is really cute. By the Camping Stitcher, Fall is in the Air. So she always gives you an exclusive pattern. Her boxes come out once every two months. And then she usually will include the floss that goes with it, backing fabric that goes with it. And I'm, this is just a, a tag, like a project bag tag that you can put on it. Rick rack. And then she always throws something fun in. Like, look at how cute this is. It's just a little decor item. And of course, what it wouldn't be good without candy. Love candy corn. But I have to do better. When I was gone, I really fell off of the wagon as far as my diet goes and instantly my headaches came roaring back. So I just need to get back into a very restricted, regimented rhythm of eating healthy again. Because honestly, there is nothing in the world that tastes good enough for me to put up with a migraine. <laughs> so that's my goal, is just to get back into a little bit of a healthier routine. So that was her last one and I just got to notice that the next one is shipping. So I think this might have come right after I did my last video, like the day of. So that's why that one didn't get shown before. Okay, then uh, there was another vendor at uh, Crazy Woman Retreat that was selling thread beds. And my friend Beth, the Red Cross Stitcher for my birthday made me a project bag and it had a thread bed in it. That was my very first thread bed. I love that thread bed. <laughs> and so the, the scale was selling them. She had boxes of them. And so I bought, I bought thread beds. <laughs> so I've got thread beds galore. So they should last me for quite a while, hopefully, because this isn't even quite all of them because I've used a few of them already. So I bought a bunch of thread beds. Um, and I'm not sorry about it at all. <laughs> okay, so then the fabric that I bought, I'm gonna reach again, is way over here. Okay. This one was from Stitchery Express and she had some 46 count. And this color is called parchment, but it's got a very beautiful golden yellow color to it. It's a little darker yet than what it's showing up on the camera. And I just took everything she had because it's kind of hard to find 46 count. And I thought that is just a beautiful sampler color. So I took the whole, I think it's a yard. It's a whole yard. I took the whole yard of that one. She also had a color called linen in 46. Oh no, it's linen. It's called beige by Weeks Dye Works. And it's got a slight greenish tint to it, but also still just a very nice neutral color. And this one, I think these all came from Stitchery Express. Uh-oh. Oh, I really hate that. I see no tag. Oh, I know what this is, though. There's no tag on it. This is Confederate Gray. I've been looking at getting some Confederate Gray because I wanted to do Land That I Love by um, Teresa Kogut on, on that because that's what Beth did, and I loved hers. This, however looks really thin. Like, look how thin this is. Like, you can see through it. So I'm not totally sure if this is gonna be good or not, but I thought, you know, I'm having a hard time finding it online. So I just thought I'm gonna grab it and try it. And I'm pretty sure this was 40 count. Um, no tag on it. I gotta mark that before the end of the day so I can remember. Um, this one was by Live and Die LA. She was one of the vendors there. And this is 36 count. She calls this color the child. I thought this was such a pretty color. It is a blue greenish gray. And that's pretty close. 
I'd say that's awfully close to what the actual color is. That one's 36. I'm trying not to be a 40 count snob. I have so much 40 count that I think I have to branch out and get some other sizes um, because there are times when I want 28 or I want 32 and maybe I want to do one over one on something. So I'm trying to branch out a little bit and get some other sizes. So this one I can't read by the red. I can't read who this one is from, but this is tarnished, 28 count. As I said, I'm trying to get some different sizes. I thought this was really pretty for a 28 count. And like I said, I might do some one over one on some of these. I don't like stitching with two threads anymore, but I will. Um, but if I can get by, I would do one over one on that in, in order to get the size that I really, really am looking for. And this one, oh, here we go. It's by Red Thicket. Redthicket.com is the dyer. This is 28 count and this is called As You Wish. Just a really pretty, almost a minty color. What would I call that? It's a really pretty green. That's pretty close too. Pretty close and true to color. And then, Live and Die LA, I got that same color, the child, in a 32 count. And I think this is the green one that I was talking about that I thought might work for my Chatelaine. But when we held this one up next to the blue, the blue was the big winner. But you can kind of see it from back here. It's got a, a green color to it. But I love this color. Green is like one of my favorites. It's where I have accents in my house. A lot of times they're in a greenish shade. So I think it'll, it's gonna work well. I think I'm gonna be able to find a good use for that one. And the last one I got from Stitchery Express and this one I saw a finish that she had and I know I took a picture of it, but it was a little bee finish and they had done it on this honeycomb. And she just had these great big bins that you could sort through. And so I spent some time sitting on the floor hunting for this pattern, for this particular fabric pattern. And I found it. So anyway, I got that one. So happy to get that. And now I don't remember at all what pattern it went with, but I know I took a picture. So I think I have the pattern. It was like a portion of Primrose Cottages, one of her bee patterns, like the hive or something, the bee skep. I'll have to go back and look at the picture, but it'll be super cute on there. Okay, what do I wanna do next? I bought some more pins from Sharice Smith, Stitchingly Along on Etsy. This is her card. And she makes a lot of different things like scissors, scissor fobs, um, different things like that. But I thought these were really pretty for winter. I thought those would be beautiful in a pillow. And I got more of these. I had some of these already, but I got a couple more of those. They're so pretty for fall, for autumn. And this one also for Christmas with the big snowflake on top. Whoops, back up. Come on. There we go. Aren't those pretty? I thought those were really, really pretty too. And then I also got my floss. Whoops, sorry, I bumped it. I also got my floss from Fireside Stitchery, these are my Gentle Arts ones I'm adding to my collection. And these are the colors that came before I left. And they're just some nice, I call them sampler colors. They're just some really beautiful sampler colors. My thread has gotten totally out of control. I need to get it put away. I've got thread all over my kitchen table right now. There's some of the colors. Just some really pretty, fall colors. So I think I get 11 from her. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, I get 11 um, flosses from her every single month. <clears throat> so really, really happy to be adding those to my, to my stash. And then I got my color in cotton. <clears throat> and I belong to the primitive colors, or I think that's what it's called. And then all colors. So the all colors are usually a little bit more bright and vibrant, and the prim, of course, are more neutral. Does it say which one is which? 
No, this is my primitives. And they're beautiful. Oof, look at the green in there. Of course, I'm partial to green, but the, the plum color is gorgeous. Okay, and then here are my, this is the first package of my all colors. If you guys want to know the names of any of these, holler, and I'll pull them apart for you. I'm just trying not to have this take hours and hours on us here. And this was the second package. So, <laughs> you know what? I stole one. I don't remember which one anymore, but I remember there was a color in here that I thought, oh, I need that. So there's only four in this package, and I don't remember which one I took anymore. But they were some beautiful purples and plums and some grays. Okay, then I had some stitchy kindness shown to me at the retreat. Um, when you're at a table, people just keep popping up and handing you some amazing things. Um, one of them was my friend handed me this pattern. She had two of them. And I love these mattresses and I wanted to do this one by Kathy from HOD. I think it's so cute. So that was my first one. And then Hannah, the gal I sat next to, she used to have an Etsy shop, which she has shut down. But she had these, what are they called? They're floss holders for full coverage. And she was giving them away um, through the retreat, like as door prizes and stuff. But she had five of them left over. And she came and found me before we took off and she just gave me all five of what she had left. And so, oh, that's another thing that's on my to-do list. I am going to tackle some of my, my puppy picture, my full coverage. So this is on my to-do list. I wanna use these. I don't really know how, but I'm gonna learn. So she gave me her leftovers. There were five of those. So I'm so excited to try those. And I, I, I honestly don't know who gave these all to me, you guys. So I'll do my best. But somebody gave me this really cute, it was a choice, and of course I chose pink. Uh, it says Flirty Bird. I don't even know what this is really, but it's pretty and it's pink. <laughs> so I grabbed that pink one. And someone also came along and gave us the state of Nevada in a needle minder on a cute card. Isn't that adorable? And another gal gave me this. I've never seen this before. And it just says, hi, I'm a magnet dryer tool. Place me in your dryer and leave me there. As your clothes tumble, they create friction that your dryer cannot dissipate. I can do that. So it's just a piece of fabric stitched down with a couple of safety pins in it. I've never heard of that before, have you? So I'm really excited to try that. I've had to kind of leave all this stuff set for you guys because I didn't want to use it until you all got a chance to see it. And I'm sure I don't have everything here anymore. I know this one came from Hannah. She made all these really adorable little minders. Look at that cute snowman with the snowflake. Oh, I think he's so cute with that hat. Love him. And then the snowflake on there. And somebody gave me um, a nail file. I apologize for those who gave these to us and I just don't know your name, but how cute is that? I do keep a nail file in my little stitchy bag because my nails chip and break so easy and I can't, I can't stitch when I've got, I can't. And I'm also like a picker. If I have a little piece that's starting to let go, I start pulling on it and that makes it 10 times worse as you all know. So I just need to keep a file close by all the time. So that was super cute. And then they also handed me a highlighter. I don't do a whole lot by chart. I do most of my stuff on a tablet, um, but this is wonderful and a pink, <laughs> big surprise there. Um, if you're marking things off, like if you're doing full coverage and you've printed the whole thing and you need to mark things off, a highlighter is key. And then I've not seen this before either. She gave two of these to us, but it's just a little piece of fabric. Then on the back, she's got like this grippy stuff. And I didn't know what it was at first. And she said, that's when you're trying to pull your needle out and it kind of gets stuck and you can grab the ends of it and it won't slip through your fingers. It just gives you a little extra grip. I thought that was ingenious. 
So that was most of, oh no, not quite. Then when we were at Osage, we had a gal that just brought like a bag full of stuff and included in that was a bunch of needles. So I got some 24 and some 26 size needles that she was just getting rid of. And then another gal, Joyce there, made all of us this wonderful little accessory bag and she put a scissors and a tweezers. Amazing. And she did that for everybody. It made me feel terrible because I didn't bring anything for anybody. I'm falling down on the job. So anyway, I thought that was so cute. And guess what color that is? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Then there was also a free table at the Osage Stitchery. And so I picked up, oh, there went a couple things that I bought. They fell off the back end. Um, this easy count guide, guideline, it's red thread, and I think it's for gritting things. That's what they were kind of telling me. If you want to like run it across your fabric so you can count every 10 stitches, for more for full coverage. And also a thread minder, which is supposed to help you keep your threads from tangling. It's just a zip bag. I'm not sure how that works either. And then there were a couple of patterns that I thought were really cute that people were just getting rid of. I thought that bunny, <clears throat> look at that bunny, really cute. And then there was a <laughs> heaven and earth design, but pretty, oh, pretty. But look at all the white, ah! maybe not so much white. There's more blues and grays and, but that's pretty. So I took both of those home. And then I just had something drop off and fall. So I'm gonna pause while I grab that. We're getting close guys, just have patterns basically left. Um, Stitchery Express, I picked up some Lady Dot Creates charcoal. I thought that could be really pretty around uh, one of the pillows that I'm making right now. So I picked that up. And then she had some of the absolutely cutest pins. I thought those were adorable for the day when I do finally get my bees done. And look at how cute these are for fall. Oh, so, so cute. And then at Stitchery Nook, I found, I have some really old invisible nylon thread that I've used in my machine for like quilting, doing quilting lines that I wanted to be invisible. And I asked him if that's what I should use like in my chatelaine or like in my mirabilias. And they said, no. Don't use that because it's kind of got a little too much stretch. She said you need to use this invisible thread. So I just picked up a spool of that. So I have that when I'm ready to go. Okay, then I think I'm ready for patterns, guys. <clears throat> At Stitchery Nook, she has tons of models on the walls and everywhere. And she had one that um, was stitched up that I fell in love with. And she doesn't even put it on her website because she only has a few left and they're kitted up and they're not available anymore. You might be able to get them from her. She might have a few left, um, but it's this pattern. Oh, and it was just so beautiful stitched up, you guys, so beautiful. So she had all the floss and then um, she also happened to have the fabric, the called for fabric which is, does it say on here? Smoky something, smoky post, smoky something. But she had the fabric. And so I picked that up as well. So I should be able to make that one when I'm ready. I've got pretty much, I think everything. I am kind of curious. I haven't really even looked at the threads yet. It's got the beads in it. Oh yeah, it's got <laughs> silks. Karen Water Lilies and Gloriana. It does have some NPI, some Gentle Art, Krynik. So it's got a little bit of everything, but it's all kitted and ready to go. And it's so nice to not have to buy the whole thing when all you need is just a little bit. And I dropped something, there we go. So that one's gonna go in my stash, along with like some of my other kits, like ready to go kind of thing. 
<laughs> Sorry, you guys. I just keep dropping things now. You know, patterns are slippery. <laughs> okay, this one is called Though He Seemeth Sleeping by Lucy Beam. And if I had just seen this pattern, I would not have picked it up. But my friend, Mary Beth, just finished it. And she did change some of the colors, but it was so beautiful that I immediately went down and, and went and got it. And if I get her permission, I'll insert a picture of hers because I took a picture of hers in here so you can see what it looks like um, in real life. And then another friend, um, Joyce, who was sitting at the table across from me, I barely was there 20 minutes and she's like, did you see this one? This is by Blueberry Ridge and it's called Mistletoe Manor Sampler and Smalls. And it's so cute. Oh my stars, it's so cute. So I was barely even settled before I was heading downstairs to go pick up this pattern. She's like, I think there's only two left. So <laughs> I had to run. That will kill me every time if they say there's one left. There's only two left. I'm all in, all in. Okay, now I'm gonna grab a pile of all the patterns that I bought. Try to hang on to these without them falling off. These are the two I thought I lost. And I was just like this close to ordering them again. These are from Annie B's. Um, these came from Lindy Stitches and they were a pre-order. This is Harvest Moon and the Pumpkin Patch. So here's Harvest Moon. Love this one, the Pumpkin Patch. I don't know if you're getting a good picture of that or not. So I had to wait just a little bit to get that one, those two. And then um, Counting Puddles, Lindsay, she did a, a design for us um, as part of our um, retreat fee. And so she did this horse. This is her style where she does tons of these unique back stitching. And so she made us this pattern. And then I think she also gave us a unicorn option if we wanted to make it into a unicorn. And then she included this beautiful fabric. It's called Aquatic by Live and Die LA. Gorgeous color, just beautiful. So that was from Counting Petals. And then I think maybe what I'll do, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I am going to pull up all her other charts that I bought and go through those next. So she had like a trunk show and she had all three of these little ornaments done. And there was just something about these that I just loved. It's a llama and a goat and a sheep. And I'll make them small, but so, those were so super cute. And then this one, she sold out of real fast like. I thought that one was really, really cute. For someone who's dipping their toes into stitching Halloween stuff, he was not very scary. I thought I could maybe handle that one. And then she also had this one, which is called Cozy Little Cottage. And it's got little mice on it. You have to look a little bit, but it's a pumpkin shaped house. And then there's little mice just peeking out everywhere. And I thought that was adorable too. She's super talented guys. I just really enjoyed um, her presentation and her story. And it was really fun to get to know her a little bit. Okay. Then from the retreat, I also purchased Autumn Swan because I already had the summer one. I have no intention of stitching it at all right now, but I just wanted it. And oh, Cricklewood Crossing with Jenny. Um, this one, trust in the Lord. I need that daily reminder. I need it every single day. What better way than to have a stitch facing you, right? I'm trying to see if there was anything else that I got from that particular. Yep, there's a couple more. This one and this one. Not those two. And what's this one? Nope. 
Okay, I think that's it from there. So the other ones that I got while I was there was I've been wanting sort of this Salem Sister, Sisters Apothecary. I've always kind of liked it. Again, like I said, I'm just sort of starting to dip my toes into doing some Halloween stitching. And I thought this one was kind of cool. And for my um, my wooden dowel, I found this one. There was like a little sail stack. And this one was on the sail stack. He's gonna be a little bit too tall, but I thought I could bring that post down just a little bit and make that fit. I thought he would be really cute on one of those um, dowels. Also this one would work on one of those dowels. And then I picked up this cottage, what is this called, cottage garden. This one's Winter Wisdom. I thought that was really pretty. I thought it was very pretty just as a standalone. Okay, and then right before I went away to those retreats, I hit my local needlework shop and I picked up Midnight Watch. I told you there were a couple I wasn't sure by Blackbird. I actually started looking for this one online and had a little bit of a hard time finding it. And that's what made me nervous about not being able to get it again. So I grabbed that one. I've always loved that cat for some reason. And this one, Away We Ride. I love this pattern. I hate the words. So I've been toying with something different. This one says, away we ride till it's dark as pitch to find the home of the Wicked Witch. Don't love witches, don't love references to witches. And so I thought about doing something like, um, away we ride into the night, a murder of crows on this wild flight or something. I had written it down, something like that. So I might change that wording. I'm not sure yet. I'm just playing with it, just playing. So I picked those up from my local needle workshop. And then from Stitchery Nook, I bought, I've been always wanting to do a, how do they call this, a peyote by Fern Ridge. And she only had a couple of them, but I thought this one with the bunnies was really cute. I've always wanted to try this beading. Liz from Country Stitchers does these. And she's always made such beautiful ones that I thought, I wanna give that a try. So I bought that. I also bought this chubby squirrel, which just came in. I have a round wooden box that I wanna to try to put him on. Maybe next year. <laughs> and then at the Casper Wyoming retreat, there was um, a small giveaway and some people got really innovative. And one of them used a spool and then they put one of these funky chickens on top of the spool and it was darling. And so when I was at Stitchery Nook, Liz had them stitched in this darker brown. So the dark brown instead of the ivory in the background. And it was really, really cute. So I bought some dark brown, dark brown fabric and I'm gonna try to make one of these little chickens sometime. And then two more things that I bought from Lindy Stitches from the pre-order is Halloween Quaker by Primrose Cottage. And then of course, The Thankful Tiny Town by Heart and Hand, cause I have them all. Oh, and look at what's on the back of this one. Does this one have a bonus? I think this one has a bonus. How cute is that one? So there's a twofer there. And then on the site, the D-Stash sites on Facebook, I picked up this one from Chris Shatagogo. It's a Biscornu. Oh, and it's really cute. It's bees. I don't know if you can see that. And then it comes with bee ribbon and some buttons. I just love, love, love that one. And I've always wanted this one. My husband used to say this. Um, as his ALS was progressing, he would say, he's prepared a place for me and it's almost ready. His home was almost ready, his room. So that one really means a lot to me. And then um, 
I've seen this one before too, this Liberty Lane. And of course it's got pink houses, pink houses. Of course I've got to go for that. This one is called, things are blowing away. It's called Live in Harmony by Sandra Sullivan. I just thought it was a cute little sampler. And this one too is called Country Spirits Delivering. It's by Country Spirits Delivering Posies. Oh, this is so cute. Really, really cute. This one just uh, spoke to the romantic person in me with all of those beautiful watercolor-ish looking flowers. This one I love. It's called The Swan Sampler by The Wishing Thorn. Oh, love, 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 love. That one's gonna probably go on a short list. And then for the spools again, those um, vintage spools, this one is by Threadwork Primitives. And that one will fit on there. And now that I've screwed up on one, I should have it down. I should know how not to do that again. And the last one I bought a Dimensions Kit. She's been around forever, but she came up for a really pretty decent price. And I thought, eh, I'll add her. I'll add it to my list. She just looks so elegant. I've always thought that was pretty. Okay. I have a hot mess, but I think I got through everything. I'm sorry if I didn't show enough project bags. I'll try to remember to do a little better with that next time around. Um, I did make myself a note. It's in my mess here somewhere of a blessing moment. I don't remember what it was, so I've got to find my note. Here we go. Oh, yeah. It was, um, you know, time is one of the most valuable things that we can give. Um, and oftentimes, it's all that anybody wants. And so I just wanted to help you guys all to, and encourage you all to remember to make time for your friends. Maybe schedule a coffee date um, or a day out together or but make time for those relationships in your life that are important and be intentional. And so sometimes that means actually calling up or texting and scheduling something. So I just want to encourage you to nurture and, um, and um, strengthen the bonds that you have. Um, relationships are so important and um, they mean more than anything. They really do. So um, just want you guys all to have a wonderful couple of stitching weeks and to remember to be kind, most importantly, uh, extend grace in all circumstances, guys, and be kind. And I love you all, and I'll get to talk to you again next time, okay? Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Hi, guys. I just wanted to do a quick little insert here, um, a little video on my Lowry stand. I've been meaning to do this for a while. Um, ever since I broke my arm a couple years ago, it's been really difficult for me to stitch in hand. My right arm gets tired, my hand gets fatigued and cramped uh, from holding the hoop or the fabric. Um, and so I have found that having a stand of some kind really does um, alleviate a lot of the stress that I have on it. Um, I've tried several different ones, including the Patoki, um, just the little one, just the desktop one. And I have found that the Lowry stand has, is, is the answer for me. So I just want to do a quick show of, of what that looks like. So I'm going to flip around and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is my chair, the infamous chair. This is my Lowry stand. So basically, see if I can do this without making you all sick. When I'm sitting here, I flip this all the way around by the bracket here, the extra add-on bracket, so that I can sit here. It holds, I have an extra piece that I bought that holds my tablet. Oops, I'm showing you a pattern. Ah! So um, this piece right here is a, an add-on as well as the long bar that comes across the center, that's an add-on, um, but it holds a tablet for me and it also holds my light and my magnifier. And um, this is the bar then that everything um, sits on or is attached to. This piece is for a Q-snap. They have a different one. The regular one doesn't really hold a Q-snap very well. It tends to slip and slide out of place a bit. Um, so, and then because of all the things I've added, it gets a little heavy. So I have an extra weight that I've added. I bought it off Amazon. It's just a flat weight. And because I'm a little extra, <laughs> mine is a 30 pound weight. 
I totally think 20 pounds or maybe even 10 would have been enough. I just didn't want it tipping over constantly on me. So um, when I'm not using it or if I have to get out of my chair, I can just swing. Pretty much each one of these moves individually, but I usually grab it by the bar. I can swing it all out of my way, back around behind and kind of get it out of the way. So I can get up and down and I can't tell you how much I love this thing. It has really changed how I do things. Um, I, I got a lot of my parts from Lindy Stitches. She sells everything. Um, and I actually recently just bought a long, a large frame extender as well to help keep my projects in front of me so I'm not sitting sideways in my chair trying to reach the stitching. So anyway, I'm just gonna insert this real quick and um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you have one, if you love yours, I love mine. Thank you all so much for stopping by today. If you liked my video, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Then you will be the first to be notified when I have a brand new video up. Please take care, be kind to each other, and God bless you all.